Hey guys, it's Bonnie, and it's been a little while since we've talked. I, uh, oh, and here's Nanook. She wants to say hello. My dad passed away in November, and we needed that time to grieve and process and take care of ourselves. It had been a while since we kind of focused on ourselves. So my husband and I have been hiking a lot and we feel great, uh, painful some days, but a good kind of pain. But I wanted to do a video because um, you can see, Callie Day, look, your head is so big. You can see my dad's truck in the back and um, dad loved this truck. We don't have a need for a truck, so our intention is to sell it. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to clean this truck, and um, whoever it goes to will have a nice clean truck, and I'll get more views on whatever platform we sell it on. Uh, but because we just did a hike recently, my legs were killing me, and I thought, you know what, we should have it detailed. And I've never done that to a vehicle, so I don't even know how much that cost. But then I thought, I'm going to clean this truck for my dad. I'm going to get toothbrushes and scrubbies and I'm just going to get in there and I'm going to do this truck justice for my dad. And then that's where sneaky guilt came in and just crunched my heart. Because I immediately thought, well, that's great, Bonnie, that you want to clean this truck for your dad. Uh, you know he's passed, right? I, I mean, if you were so keen on cleaning the truck, why didn't you do it when he was alive? He loved this truck. What, you couldn't go over once a year even to clean this truck? And the guilt just hit me out of the blue. And I even thought that I had been doing pretty well with the guilt. You know, when your loved one passes, for me at least, I think you're pretty heavy on the guilt right after because there's all these, you know, I should have done this, I could have done this, why didn't I do this? But I think for self-preservation, you have to find a way to deal with it. And I thought I had found a way to deal with it, and I actually had. Um, there's a fantastic movie. It's called Run, Fat Boy, Run, and it's about this marathon run runner. Um, Simon Pegg is the actor. He's awesome. But he's trying to run a marathon, and he's never done one before, and he hits the metaphorical wall. Well, actually, it's actual. In the, in the movie, it's a, it's a wall. It's a brick wall that comes up. In the movie, that's a negative because he can't reach his goals now. This wall is stopping him. This mental and emotional wall is stopping him. I actually love the idea of a brick wall because I, for a while now, have been using it to stop, you know, some of those just prevailing thoughts that come into your head. And sometimes they just keep coming. Um, really great with guilt, by the way. I visualize this wall that comes up and it stops a lot of those thoughts. And um, <laughs> Nook is back again. And it works if I practice it. What caught me off guard today was just, you know, you think you've got a handle on guilt and how to handle that. But doing something as simple as washing a truck and then realizing that you could have done so much more and why didn't you? It did catch me off guard because I, like I said, I, I, I thought I'd done a good job with that. I've talked with a couple of friends over the last couple of weeks and that whole guilt thing, okay, I love you prevails in so many ways either you know those people are guilty that they're not doing more for their loved one they're guilty they had to put them in a facility guilty that they don't visit enough 
And here's the big one. And I struggled with this one too. Guilty because there were times when you just wanted it to be over. I, it's kind of appropriate that my dad's truck is here because this driveway probably had, you know, groove marks in it of me on the phone with sisters or my husband just going, you know what, I don't think I can do this. I can't do this. You know, maybe dad was having a bad day that day. Maybe he was angry and I'm pretty sensitive sometimes. But walking back and forth, I just can't do this. I can't do this. I don't have it in me. I thought I could. And now I feel guilty because we've made all these plans. He's moved in with us. And now what? I'm going to upset the apple cart? Are we going to have to move him into a facility? Because now I can't do it. The guilt from just all of that is so emotionally draining. The guilt of laying in your bed first thing in the morning and just kind of wondering, I wonder if today is the day he will pass away. And it, I mean, even saying it is powerful in a weird way because who wants to say that they're wondering, maybe a little bit hoping that their loved one isn't going to have to deal with this anymore? And you're not going to have to deal with this anymore. And it's not because you don't love them. That wasn't it. We were grateful to be able to share our home with my dad. I was grateful to have the sisters that I have that helped out in so many ways, the husband that I have, the son. But there are the days where you kind of thought, how much longer can I do this? And feeling like, I don't know if it's that much longer. It rips your soul apart. It makes you feel like a bad person. It makes you feel like a bad daughter, or if you're a spouse, a bad spouse. Or you... The guilt that just kind of hangs there from those thoughts, they keep you disconnected from your loved ones, because if you can think those kind of thoughts, what kind of person can you be? And that goes through your mind. You know, maybe I'm not worthy enough. Maybe someone's going to find out that I'm kind of ready. I'm kind of done. I'm, I can't do this anymore. And that I'm weak. And that crushes your soul. So I thought I had done well with the guilt. And I think for the most part I had. When dad passed away, I made peace with a lot of those thoughts that came up. I needed to. When dad passed away, we got to say goodbye in such a funny and great way. We went over to the house and shared a beer. I made peace with all of that. I had to remember that I was only human and any human under a tremendous amount of stress is going to be stressed out and they're going to feel guilty. I use my brick wall technique because I have to. If I don't, it stops me from connecting with my spouse, loved ones, friends, my son, myself. It's also a terrible domino effect because you feel guilty. Because you're feeling guilty about all this other stuff, you're feeling guilty that you're now not connecting with those around you. 
And you have an excuse. Well, I've got a loved one. I All my attention has to go here. What, what do you want me to do? You've got the excuse. It still has the same effect. You're not connecting. So use whatever tool you have to. If you want to borrow my brick wall, you are welcome to it. If you want to make it out of stone or wood or tile or glass, uh, if you want to go like all crazy and deck it out and paint it and put flowers on it, if you have other tools, please use those. Try not to let the guilt get to you so much. It's not easy, and I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Like I said, grooves in the, the pavement. But no matter what happens, it will be okay. And if you have a little time, if you have a little time from work or your loved ones, and if it's not done out of guilt, go spend time with your loved one. Connect with them. But do it because you have a little bit of time and because you're in a good mental space that day. Don't do it to check off a, a box because that's just going to lead to guilt too. So I washed this truck for my dad even though he's not going to drive it anymore. I'm washing it for the next person who will be driving it. And I'm envisioning them either taking amazing road trips or maybe they have a job and they need it to get to and from their job or to deliver their children here and there or whatever. I'm sending good energy and love that it will carry them safely to their destination. And I'm sending you guys good love and good energy for your journey. Don't let the guilt get to you. Build your wall. Kiss your loved ones. Go take a walk. And we'll talk to you soon.